Hey, this is Brian and I'm coming to you from Marina del Rey. Um, you can see the boats in the background, how beautiful it is out there. Uh, it is a beautiful day out here and I'm taking a nice little walk and I wanted to do a little video for you. And in this video, I wanna talk specifically about uh, being overly analytical, overly numb, overly dramatic like this guy that's yelling in the background or being a dancing monkey when you're communicating versus being authentic and real. This one little change radically shifts so many clients' lives in our workshops. And if you can start to get this in this video today, you can have a huge shift. Um, you see, our program is all about subcommunication. Our program, the way we teach, is all about embodiment. It's about communicating from your body in a real, authentic way. And that changes everything. And these ways of being really inhibit authentic, real communication. You see, in all these ways of being, you're either hiding, you're averse to something you don't want the ladies to feel on you, i.e. numbness, overly analytical, I'm gonna shut down, I'm gonna shut down my emotions so you don't feel, or you're really attached because you're wanting something from them and you're pushing and pulling and they feel it and then they wanna reject you. So let's talk about these ideas. Number one, uh, being overly uh, numb. This one I see is super common. I used to be this one and it's a protective mechanism. It's because you're averse to having emotions and feelings because you're afraid of getting rejected. You see, we had a tumultuous household growing up in my house. And so it's really benefited me as a child to learn to numb out and shut down my emotions to keep from getting into arguments or fights in my household. And so when I grew up, I, I started to take this behavior into my life and it just didn't serve me. When I started to be numbed out at parties and with girls and with women, all they wanted to do was get away from me. I was boring. I wasn't interesting. There was no emotion to play with. You see, we need emotion and emotional expression to be able to relate to each other, to be able to have fun with each other. And I was missing that. I was missing that piece in spades. So what does this look like? Well, it basically looks like if I was to walk up and say hi, I'd be like, hi, um, my name's Brian, how are you? Oh, so what are you doing today? Um, interesting, uh, uh, t uh, tell me where you're from. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, you're, you're, really, uh, you're really interesting. Oh, tell me more about that ring that you're wearing. I, I, I think that ring's very interesting. And there's a, there's a numbness or a shutdown quality. Now there's a many versions it comes in. That was just one example, but there's this sense of lack of emotion and lack of feeling. And there's a sense of checking out and not letting somebody see you behind the wall. So I'm doing my best I can to emulate these. Um, I used to be able to emulate them better. And as I get farther and farther away from having these in my life, it's getting harder and harder actually. Um, but so the next one, let's talk about what it's like to be overly analytical. And this one's super common. We get a lot of guys like this. I had this one too. Uh, if I wasn't being numb, I was being overly analytical. So the overly analytical part looks like what? Or sounds like what? And looks like, so just facial expressions and tone. So when I come up to say hi, I might pop up here, pop up into my head, lock out on the spine, and I'll be like, hi, my name's Brian. What's your name? Oh, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Ah, interesting. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, I really like that ring. That's a fascinating ring. Why did you buy that ring? And do you feel the, the data collecting kind of orientation I got going on there? I'm trying to collect data and information thinking that's what they want. They don't go out to, to, to exchange data. They go out to have an emotional exchange, to exchange feelings, depths of feelings, emotions, and things like that. So as I, as I do that, I actually cause them to have to come out of their emotions and get annoyed. So eventually they want to get away from me. And so we don't want that one either. We want to get rid of that analytical nature. That's tough for some guys who've been analytical their whole life. They communicate with all their best friends in an analytical way and all their friends are analytical. So you need to get some friends that aren't analytical if you're doing that one. That's the one where you get the interview question situation where girls are like, I feel like I'm being interviewed because when you're asking questions from that place, if I say, so tell me more about yourself. Oh, why did you go to that college? Interesting. Oh, and why, why'd you choose to live over here versus over here? Oh, tell me something interesting about yourself and, and uh, tell me two things interesting about yourself. You know, questions like that, where there's this real data-oriented place. And the next one is dramatization. And I've had some clients, I, I still think of the client that had the most dramatization of any client I've ever met. He blew my mind. He was so over the top with his dramatization. Dramatization is when you're being overly expressive. So what people are doing when they're being overly dramatic is they're feeling an emotion and then they're amplifying it. See, 
there's two reasons they would do that. One, they don't want to be vulnerable with the emotion. So by amplifying it, they get to distract themselves a little bit. Or by dramatizing the emotion, they think they can get an effect. So for example, if I say you're really pretty and I feel really raw and vulnerable when I say that and she feels it and gets turned on by that and I notice it works, then maybe the next time I go out and I say, oh, hey, you're really pretty and I start pushing with it and I start trying to manipulate with it because, oh, that worked. Oh, no, you're so beautiful. Look at you. I just I think you're so pretty. Check you out. And it gets to be too much. It's over the top. We're, we're taking something that worked and now we're killing it it's like, it's like you're making some food and you're you're putting too much of an ingredient in there because a little bit tasted good a lot's got to be great and then you blow the whole thing up you ruin it and so and now all of a sudden it tastes like all you can taste is the garlic <laughs> so dramatization is like for example i walk up and i'm like hi how you doing what's your name my name is brian hey i love that ring check that ring out where are you from oh you look like trouble you're totally trouble aren't you and there's a push and a pull on it it's not authentic it's not real okay and so we don't want that either and then there's the dancing monkey let's talk about the dancing monkey for a minute the dancing monkey is somebody who takes dramatization to a whole new level they become so dramatic and they start to perform for the girls. They act goofy, they act stupid, they act ridiculous, and girls will laugh and listen to them all night and hang out with them because they're fun. But the girls don't wanna fuck those guys. They don't wanna be with those guys. They don't wanna date those guys because the dancing monkey is their entertainer for the night. But he's not a, typically a guy they respect because he's dancing for them and not with them. So, these four guys need to stop. If you're doing any one of those, they need to stop. If you're not sure, ask your friend. If you got a friend that's into this and really wants to help you grow and learn, ask them about this, talk to them and see what they think. Uh, let them watch this video and see if, they, if you fit into one of these categories. Another thing you can do is videotape yourself. Videotape yourself saying hi, being expressive with friends, talking to friends and noticing your behavior. You can videotape yourself even just talking into the camera several times a day till you start to learn to relax. What you really want is to be real. What you really want is to be raw, is to have true, authentic, emotional expression. So when you walk up to somebody and you wanna say hi, it's hi. My name's Brian, what's your name? Where are you from? Well, tell me more about yourself. Yes, you will have to express a little bit more as it gets louder, that's normal, but you gotta to adjust to the vibration. You wanna be around the vibration of the environment a little bit more. Another really important piece of being authentic is not being attached to getting a response. You can want a response, sure. I want, I want her to like me, but I'm not attached to it. And not to be averse to it and just be real, just put it out there. Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting ring you're wearing there. Tell me more about it. Oh, nice. You know what, tell me, I'm curious, as I'm getting to know her, let's say we've been talking for a bit. I'm curious, tell me one unique thing about you. And you have to actually access real curiosity. But if you're trying to manipulate, what you'll be doing is trying to push curiosity on them or what you think is curiosity. If you're not manipulating and you're being authentic, you'll feel curiosity in your body and you offer it as a gift. They can take it or they can leave it. It, it's okay either way. You see, men that are good at authentic, real communication don't need a specific response. They're okay with rejection. They're okay with no. They realize that when they approach a girl, that the girl doesn't owe them a damn thing. And they're approaching her, she can reject. And as you get to know her, if you don't like her, you can reject and you can move on. Because you don't know each other, you don't owe each other anything. So learning to be real is the key. So one of the ways to do this is to record yourself. Put a little something in your pocket, like your cell phone. Turn on the recorder when you're out having interactions. Listen to it later. Do you sound authentic? Do you sound real? Do you sound analytical? Do you sound dramatic? Okay? And then ask your friends how you're being, especially friends that can be real with you, authentic with you. Not one of those friends that just wants to tell you what you want to hear, but friends that like to be real. And find out what they think. Listen to them. Okay, so you got a couple things you can do here. You can record yourself when you're out, just carry a cell phone in your pocket, listen to it back, ask yourself if you're really being authentic and real. Ask yourself if you're doing one of these things, being numb, uh, analytical, dramatic, or if you're dancing and being the entertainer. Uh, ask your friends and even record yourself on video and play it back and just watch who you're being. Literally talk to the camera, express to the camera. I learn so much by watching my own videos. I can see when I'm trying to uh, manipulate the audience, control the audience, or if I'm just trying to give. 
and uh, give value. And ultimately, the more you give value, the more you're gonna get exactly what you want in return. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and um, all that stuff. Hit the bell notification. Put a comment in the video for sure. And, uh, and if you're having trouble with this stuff still and you wanna get a little deeper, either check out our workshops or if you want something simple, check out my new book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. Uh, there's a link in here somewhere for it. And uh, that book really looks at the in-depth sub-communication, the way you communicate underneath, because that's what we're really about here at Fearless, is that sub-communication. Because when you change that sub-communication, everything on the outside changes. So with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.